presence be dance and dance and dance as we share your word of God. Minister to us. We open our hearts, oh God. Let your word come the signs and wonders to confirm your word, oh God. We thank you for this journey of taking us on this series of hearing your words. On this, oh God, part six today, we pray for your anointing to fill this place. Minister to my heart. Tell the Lord to minister to your heart. Minister to my mind. Even those who are streaming online, those who are not feeling well, those who are here, they will be feeling well. Let the power of your word begin to bring them to healing. I speak miracles in this place. Those of you trusting you for a miracle, they will get what they are expecting from you. Those who are expecting somebody to respond and, and, and make it easier for them and use them, send those people. Have your way now. Let that blessing be commanded as we command it in Jesus' name. I speak and I command a blessing, I command healing, I command increase upon your people. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. I'm blessed with an amazing lady called Caroline Monboy, Caroline Kamburu. Uh, we are blessed with three children. Kayla is the first one, we have Zara, the second one, and we have uh, the current last one, current. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is, it is last one sitting in. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Who knows the future? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Uh, one day the Lord may say, Bring thee ye a sacrifice of twins and bring thyself to my presence. Amen. <laughs> anyway, 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 it's a joke. It's a, some of you cannot take a Sunday joke. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So, I uh, receive apologies from like 10 people who woke me up today uh, at 6. Uh, I was praying for different people who couldn't make it today. Uh, because yesterday, apparently, we were having fun in a wedding and some people uh, did not have as much fun. Praise the Lord! Because uh, the, the enemy struck in terms of... Uh, praise the Lord! Amen. Is it possible to put the tripod a little bit behind so that we don't block anyone? Then you will you, you, you be zooming in, in case you want to see my mustache. Praise the Lord! <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, are we together? I don't want to block anyone behind. Yeah. Before we buy those red cameras, uh, we are working on something. But let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate the sacrifice. Of the All right. So, so a few people uh, were unfortunate uh, uh, to uh, they got unwell because of the food at the wedding. Uh, I think uh, some of us, uh, we are just lucky, we passed by a whisker, amen? amen. You know, uh, Carol held that plate of food and she said, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> So she, she prayed for the food and after I had a prayer and I know her, I, I grabbed the food and I prayed for it again. Uh, for the second time, and I took God, I can, I'm teaching tomorrow, I cannot afford to have an abs, a stomach abs, I just have my amen? <laughs> so, 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 we ate the food, and uh, I, I just, I don't take sodas, but I just got uh, a lady to take two, two bottles of coke, you understand? <laughs> so I went ahead, and I think in between the prayer, and in between the coke, I uh, got in mercy on us. <laughs> Most of you, I don't know how mercy came through. Maybe you danced the acidity of your body. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Uh, but uh, but uh, apologies on behalf of the leadership for the consumption of uh, that kind of uh, food. Amen? Yeah, we pray that... Uh, I, I don't think there was a catering team. I think it's the district catering team that cooked the food. And uh, you know, just because you're a woman does not mean you're a chef, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a very bad. <laughs> you're feeling it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 at that point, I 
respect the chefs who have gone to school for our studies. Because when you go to school, they are taught how you can turn food into poison. After food is made, you turn it into poison. It's very dangerous. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, and the ones who know that don't know how to fix that problem. So it's good we always consult such learned people. Praise the Lord. Uh, I believe if they were in charge, it would be an interesting story. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm giving you a compliment. Because <laughs> I don't want that under my breath. <laughs> yeah, but, but the food was really tasty. Uh, it is unfortunate. I, I don't think it's all the food. I think there was specific um, sufuria, maybe one or two that we're exposed to too much heat, uh, and it quickly begins to turn to jealous. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, so we, we pardon them, praise the Lord. Uh, and uh, and uh, please understand. Take, take the good, there was a lot of good in the wedding. We had fun, you were there, hallelujah, I was there, we had fun. We had uh, gorgeous photos, amen. amen. My wife was there, if you, if you didn't you know, get a chance, if you have not seen my wife for a while, you can go and check the photos in there. <laughs> uh, but she'll be coming soon. Uh, we're waiting for the kids to get the final jabs so that uh, we can increase the immunity and protect the child. Amen. Amen. So, so because of uh, the unfortunate challenge uh, about uh, the people who, I would say, unlucky, praise the Lord. But we thank God that uh, nobody has uh, been admitted in any hospital. They're okay. And we have been praying and we will continue to pray. And even as many people stream right now online, uh, we, we and, and you know sometimes the devil finds a crack, you understand that, yeah. in such a situation and, and then turns it into an attack, you know? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So 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 we, we want to rebuke that attack in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for the people at home. Let's pray. Father, we come before your throne. We pray for everybody who is not feeling well from this church and outside this church connected to Crisco. Would you touch them? We pray that there will be no deterioration. There will be no misdiagnosis of the doctor's lying so that we can rip them off. Uh, that you shall touch them, oh God. You shall heal them. The, the dehydration will, will dry up. We'll give them wisdom in what to eat, uh, how to handle themselves. Would you touch them? Let your angelic presence just show up in their room right now where they are and touch them and heal them. Let them not miss their reward. Let them not miss their breakthrough of everything you wanted to do to their lives today. In Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. Yeah. Alright, thank you. Can somebody remove the feedback on this microphone? I know Perez is one of the people who are not feeling well, and uh, we can feel his impact. Uh, thank you, and Your Excellency. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, are you ready for the word? Yeah. Clap to Jesus then. <laughs> the Lord will continue touching you even as we are able to share the word. I'll take just a short time and uh, we'll, we'll be done early so that you can be able to get to know each other and enjoy Mandazi. Praise the Lord. Amen. And Mandazi is uh, blessed. We can heal it. Amen. 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 Yes, we, we, are, we want to enjoy a cup of tea and some Mandazis because it's our culture. Yeah. It's a church of refreshment, both spiritually and naturally. Yes. Karibuni, every visitor, thank you for the testimonies, for the ministration since morning. We come at the church at 6, we were here, and it's been amazing. Amen? Amen. Yes, so the series I've been teaching today, we're in part 6 of, I think the sound is good now. Ah, what did you do? Go back, praise the Lord. Remove the bass, happy night. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Oh, Jeff, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Ah, that's good, stay there. Amen. Okay, there's something off. Hallelujah. Why don't you guys take pictures of the, <laughs> of the mixer? Amen. Whenever it's good. Uh, I like that. That is good. Yes, yes, that's me now. Amen. So hearing from hearing the voice of God, hearing from God or hearing the voice of God has been the teaching that we have been sharing for the last six six services that we have had, whether Wednesday or whether Sunday services. A bit for the Sunday services, we, we tend to go a bit deeper, we dive differently. And uh, I hope you have been enjoying yourself. Is it transforming your life? Yes, yes. yes. May God continue to minister to you and uh, may God continue to expand you. Even as we share the word of God, may God minister to you. Say, Lord, Lord. Minister, to me. minister to me now. 
by your spirit. My heart is open. I have no attitude. Come on, say that I have no attitude. Minister to me now. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So today I'll be sharing a different part. There's a part I wanted to share today and illustrate a few things. But uh, I won't do that. Uh, I want to really build another foundation on that. Then on, on Sunday, we're going to take some two hours, praise the Lord, and, 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 and get deeper where we're going to divide the soul, the spirit, the body, and, and begin to uh, help and teach you some stuff that are going to change your life. Even today, God is going to change your life. But on Sunday, we were dealing with the presence of God factor in hearing from God. There's a factor to the presence of God. I'm not going to even do a recap. I will, I will not do that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because we have an audio and we, we even have a video. Praise the Lord. Amen. It has taken a while to upload online because it's been 4K. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, so it's heavy. I hear it's 25 GB. Uh, praise the Lord. Are we together? Yes. yes. So, so today uh, I'll just go to the message, which is the subtopic is the relationship factor in hearing the voice of God. Today I'll be dealing with the relationship factor. in hearing. Now, uh, one more time. The relationship factor. Uh -huh. All right. There is a factor. In, in hearing from God in sense of the, the relationship. Uh, the Bible says, and I'm going to look at a few scriptures that I'm going to run through them, and I'm trusting, I can hear a ringing sound on the microphone. Uh, uh, feedback or? It's feedback, okay. okay. Yes, uh, praise the Lord. Yeah. So now we're going to go to Luke chapter 15. And I'm going to show you something there, but uh, let me just dance around a few verses. Uh, you can just, sorry. Oh, we put the, okay. All right. Praise the Lord. Ah, that is good. Amen. Thank you. So, the Bible says in the book of John 10, 27, that my sheep hear my voice, uh, and I know them. Praise the Lord. This, do something about this. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they will follow me, and I will give. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's just focus on that. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. That is in the book of John 10, 27 to 28. Uh, 28 says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall man pluck them out of my hand. My sheep know my voice. So there is a relationship factor in terms of hearing the voice of God. When you hear sheep, uh, it, it quickly uh, reminds us of Psalms 23 that says, The Lord is my shepherd. Okay, I shall not be in, in any need whatsoever because I have a shepherd. And uh, the first thing we notice is that there is a relationship between the, 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 the shepherd and the sheep. Can you say there's a relationship? Now you're killing the sound. Praise the Lord. Uh, there is, uh, praise the Lord. Amen. There's a relationship between the sheep and the shepherd. Amen. Amen. There's a relationship. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. The, the conversation starts with my. The first thing is, are you the sheep of his pasture? Are you first of all his sheep? Oh, I, I'm going to throw this mic. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know I love excellent sounds. Uh, let me try this. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. I just threw it. Amen. Uh, now, put some stereo on this microphone. Uh, which one? There was one that was... Check, check. Praise the Lord. No, this, this microphone was on. I think it was the one giving feedback. Yes, it should be well now. Let me see. Check, check. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, that is, that's perfect. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that revelation. Amen. Come to Jesus. <laughs> I love quality sounds. So the moment we build our church, the first thing you'll see is doubly digital sound. I'm telling you. Amen. That has to be quality sound. Amen. You will hear.
Hallelujah, the Lord is talking to you. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, through the speakers. Amen. Amen. All right. Ah, this is good. See, see I'm clear now. Yeah. It's like we are here now. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder what the people who were online, what they were going through. All right. So the Bible says that my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. It is my sheep. Mine. He owns you. Come on now. He paid a price in exchange for you. Died on a bloody cross for you. So the conversation starts with, they have to be my sheep. If they don't hear my voice, we need to interrogate, are they mine in the first place? Because the sheep that are not his will not hear his voice. Then if they cannot hear, they cannot follow. Because your ability to hear determines your navigation. Praise the Lord. Amen. Your ability to hear determines your actions and your actions, your results. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So my sheep will hear my voice and because they have heard my voice and they will follow me. They will follow me where? To abundance. Because I cannot, I cannot lead anyone to any frustration as God I will lead them to abundance. Amen. For I died that you might, John 10, 10, praise the Lord, Amen. that you might live a life and live it in abundance. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just add a little bit volume so that I don't burst my lungs. Just volume for care. I don't touch anything else. So, so my, my sheep, so you will see here, there's a relationship between the sheep and the shepherd. And the sheep is not an insult. When, when you're called sheep in the kingdom of God, you're not being insulted. Ah, uh, come on now. Yeah. So the day somebody insults you, calls you sheep, say amen. 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 Because sheep is, is a metaphor of obedience. Amen. amen. Be that's why, because you are after, you are taking after the flow of Jesus Christ. Because he is the lamb of God. And a lamb grows up to beget sheep. Ah, come on now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the Bible says that in Psalm 23, that the Lord is my shepherd. So the moment you make the Lord your shepherd, he's going to lead you. The next thing is, he's going to lead you. But there has to be a relationship. Back then, we used to go to Nakuru every, every December. The sound is good. Come here now. Uh, every December, when I was young, we used to go to Nakuru. No Kondani. And we used to, one thing I used to love about Christmas back for those days, because we used to go hunting. We used to go hunting with dogs. I think that's when I fell in love with dogs. I love dogs. Men are not dogs, ladies. Dogs are dogs alone. Praise the Lord. So, so I, I, we used to go hunting and uh, we ate a lot of deer meat. We used to go to the Napuru uh, near the park. We used, to, we used to do a lot of things. We killed snakes, we killed stuff. <laughs> yeah, just, just, uh, there's something about the meat you have hunted, isn't it? Uh, praise the Lord. I know you are really far away from uh, wild animals. Praise the Lord. We, we are near more to Nairobi, amen? Right. So, so, so I noticed something about shepherds that after you you live with your sheep for some time, they even know you. Even cows and uh, and and, uh, and sheep that uh, or goats that are violent, cattle, praise the Lord, they will be violent to everybody else other than their owner. Yeah. They, they know they know the whisper. They know even when you're calling them to take some water. It, it was it was amazing. I had not seen anything like that. Some of you, you don't think it exists. It's, it's very natural. You, have you ever noticed when the, our wonderful uh, pastoralists are taking care of the cows, they're not chasing them around. They, they just make a whistle, uh, and, and the cows know what to do. They know it is time to eat. They know, let's keep moving. Praise the Lord. So there's a relationship that is between the, the shepherd and the sheep. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Yes. Until the shepherd has developed a relationship with the sheep, he can't lead them to the still waters. He can't lead them even to the table. And, and he can't bring them to the place where their heads are being anointed. The, the, the journey has to start with a relationship. Praise the Lord. Yeah. The journey has to start with a relationship. Praise the Lord. Yeah. 
And I want to start with a high note and I want to say something very complex and very deep. And I want to tell you some good news and bad news. The Bible says in the, let me, let me read for you a passage which is very important. Um, and I want you to, I know you have been singing a song. Uh, anyone who ever had a song called Reckless? Reckless Love? Yeah. How does it go? Somebody sing it. He's the one, just like you have sung in that song, he leaves the 99 and goes for you. Can you say, he leaves the 99 and goes for me. Let me now do an abstract. I hope, I hope you, are open, you have an open mind. I'm going to paint a picture of an abstract to show you something. I have three main points about that, that thought. The first thing I want you to realize is that, uh, that the ship that runs away Praise the Lord. The ship that runs away begins to learn three things about God. The first thing that she will quickly learn is the compassion. The compassion of Father God. Amen. Amen. I know there's people like that testimony of uh, my daughter here, Kamukami, which uh, I actually uh, resonate with, uh, saying that uh, she has never thought of drinking, missed drinking, and all that. But we must also understand we are, as much as even me, I've never drank, I'm not interested in drinking. For me, I, I learn quickly from other people's mistakes. I've never watched somebody succeed their way from the body. I've never seen anyone get excited and live happily ever after because he became a drunkard. I see the pictures that pay, uh, the, the children paint of their, of their parents back at home. When they are told to paint the picture of their parents, they, they paint them uh, when they are lying on the side of the road. Komtaro. Kamugoi mekelewa juyamara. So, 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 I'm not interested with uh, that, uh, that, that, that drinking and that, that desire. But we must also understand that we are tempted and attacked differently. For me, uh, I may not be attacked or tempted with a drink. But there could be something else which could be my kryptonite. But there's also many people here and others who are on the way who could have struggled all their lives with drinking. Who may sing a song of worship, then rush to their car and sing some viceroy. And viceroy is not worship energy drink. You understand? You understand? Are you understanding? So what I'm telling you is that the, the, the one that runs away from God, he leaves the 99 and he goes for them. So there is an advantage of the of the son who is left as, at home. Because when you read that story in the, in the book of Luke 15, it goes down there and it begins to introduce the story of the prodigal son. And I will not spend time on the prodigal son, uh, but I will mention something about the prodigal son. I told you the enemy of the person joining the church is the one already in the church. Did you understand? Yes. Because why? Because... The prodigal son coming home, his heart now is purified by the mess he has been going through. All he wants is the father. He does not, he, at this time, he's not interested in any, in any inheritance. 
he has become like Moses who says, I don't need an inheritance in the promised land. You are my exceedingly great reward. So he has realized my greatest inheritance is Jehovah God. Now, that mindset, that state of a heart does not flow, does not connect with the religious mind left at home. The one that has never drunk, the one that has never slept outside there, the one that has never smoked or sniffed. They may not agree. Ah, come on. That's why he, he, the older brother who was self-righteous never wanted to do to associate himself with the prodigal son. He even refused to go to the party. Ah, come on. Yeah. Are, you, are you together? Yes. So I will tell you, there is a so the, 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 it looks like good news, but it, it's not it's not all that. Let me explain something. So the prodigal son will quickly learn number one of the compassion and the love of God that carries you when no one, including yourself, can carry you. Yeah. This is the first thing the prodigal son will know. That's why the disciples who have not made a mistake yet will judge the woman washing the feet of Jesus oh, come on now. and cleaning them up with her hair. They don't understand that. They don't understand why she's breaking, the prostitute is breaking the alabaster box and washing with uh, with perfume one one year wages today's uh, value could be at least 400 and above a thousand praise the lord one of perfume and cleaning it with her hair cleaning the dust of galilee praise the lord Amen. from the feet of jesus and jesus did not stop him because jesus will always protect who he went out to get. Praise the Lord. So, so the disciples don't understand this. Judas is twisted. Praise the Lord. It's like I think we can start a, a poverty alleviation project with this money. And Jesus is like, no, no, no. This woman, you don't understand the price of her worship. You don't understand why she's weeping when you are talking. You don't understand. Uh, that's why you're interfering with her worship. That's why when she's worshiping, you are talking. It's because you don't know the price of her freedom. Uh, come on now. She knows the price of her freedom. You don't know. So quickly, quickly, the prodigal son, the prodigal son, Sunday school, put it that way. For us, it's all like you do Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, are you? Okay, it's not rolling. I'm exaggerating. You understand what I'm saying? So the prodigal son will quickly learn of the compassion of the father. That that the child at home, the son back at home, may never know. The person born and raised in church may never know. They may never know. And before you get tempted and you, be, you get ex interested in becoming a prodigal son, let me tell you the other two points. Because <laughs> I know already some of you are getting kind of appetite. How does it feel to be carried when I can carry myself? <laughs> when people go and drink, most of them are carried at home in the evening. Yeah. How does it feel? Praise the Lord. Before you get an appetizer to go and test. So this will be a very dangerous place to end the recording. <laughs> so, so please don't end the recording right here. Please keep listening, whoever will be listening this after. There is, he also learns two very important things. Hmm. Open for me, which, which version is this? Ah, perfect. Uh, open for me some city. He quickly learns, number two, the disciplinary actions and corrections procedures for the ones the Lord loves. He will quickly learn 
the disciplinary measures of the father, the corrections protocols. <laughs> he will learn the, the chastenings of the father. So he is not just coming for you like, ah, how are you baby? Oh, no, 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 no. You are going to get some chastening. Because the Bible says, uh, you can give me that verse, uh, those he loves, he chastens. Because his love has driven him. Ah, come on now. Because his love has driven him from his comfort to go for you. Are you listening? Watch an interest with your hand. Praise the Lord. I see suit in the jacket. Some of you. Praise the Lord. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Are we together? Yes. Have you got it? Read it for me out loud. Louder. Yes. word to mean whips. The best African word to amplify that is he beats. I know, I know in Africa you know beating. You know what I'm saying? Kichapo. Are you understanding? So the Lord, how many of you are not lift your hand, how many of you are going through Kichapo? Kichapo of the Lord. So those he loves, he will chasten. Meaning, you are going to feel the other part. Because this shepherd carries two things. One side, he carries the rod. The other side, he carries the staff. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One is to guide, the other one is to discipline. Because he has to lead you. And maybe you feel you need to lead yourself. But I'm coming back. Let me tell you also something. Point number three, something that you also begins to learn. The Bible says, in Psalms 18, I'm going to show you. You don't have to open it right now. Let me show you this. Point number three. Of the, are you still interested in learning the compassion of the Father and uh, the carrying of the Lord? You can learn it. The easy way. You don't have to learn it the hard way. You can learn it in his presence. You don't have to learn it when he's bringing you out of the cloud. You don't have to learn it after you decide now, you have, you have decided to surrender because now HIV is flowing in your blood and, uh, and, and gonorrhea at the same time. Because abortion has backfired and, and, and you are on life support now. You don't have to learn to, to say, Lord, I surrender at that point. You don't, you don't need to go there. Ah, come on now. Amen. But if you find yourself there, the Bible says, <laughs> he, he, he's going to go for that one and ignore the 99. Before I go to the abstract, I promised you, let me tell you the other thing that this person will, will also learn. He will also learn, the, the one he goes for, the danger and the torments of darkness so as to appreciate the love of the Father. Amen. You will easily take for granted the Father's love because you do not know otherwise. <laughs> if you are sleeping, say amen. Praise the Lord. You will quickly, are you, are, are you hearing something? Yes. You will quickly, you will quickly take for granted the love of the Father, the compassion of the Father, because you don't know otherwise. We have been looking for, uh, staring at our children, me and my wife, and we have been laughing so many times. And we are like, my goodness. So, so we have a nickname for our children, we call them rich kids. So we keep, we keep, 
you keep saying just, just slandering them with my wife. You're like, oh my goodness, these are rich kids. Because sometimes we, we we are treating them and they are just proud, you know? They are like, uh, me, me spending means me, 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 So, okay, so. Ah, me stacky sausage, me nataka sijui, boiled eggs sijui. So, so, so they really, sometimes, yeah, you're just watching them. Then they're there fighting for iPad, they're there saying it's my bike, it's not your bike. The other day, uh, I, I bought a, a Zara, uh, you know this potty, for potty seat, that you can actually, it is a seat but a potty seat, you know. Uh, and Kayla found it is very fast, so Kayla started stealing it to sit on it, and uh, and they started fighting. So I told Kayla, please let your sister be, and then uh, I'll buy your own, your own seat. Uh, I'll, I'm going to buy your own seat now. So I went and uh, bought Kayla a slightly bigger seat. Then Zara demanded, that's, that's my seat now. For some reason, Zara fell in love with that seat and said, that red seat is mine. So they started fighting and I, I, I got, they won me out uh, with uh, trying to regulate who, who seat is it. And I thought, that, that is so beneath me, such a waste of anointing for me to be, to be arbitrating seat issues in my house. So I, I was like, okay, I'll buy another one. So I went to the shop and bought the last seat. And I asked Kayla, now, since Kayla Zara has taken the red one, who, who choose your color. So she chose a purple seat, I bought that purple seat to get back at home. Uh, now, Zara is interested with the new seat. So, so, so I had to, uh, now, put her into this split on her. Now, this is you see, you chose the red one, that's yours. Now, for some reason, Kayla likes that seat. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, so we I had to flip now and give Kayla the old seat and Zara the new seat, and there was peace now <laughs> for a while. <laughs> because Kayla secretly loves the purple seat. So, so what, what what Kayla would do? She would rush and say, Zara is not around. Let me sit on this seat before Zara comes. <laughs> then, then Zara would just be walking down the stairs and she's like, my. <laughs> and now Kayla has to leave the seat. So we were watching them, we were like, this is rich kid problems. <laughs> You're like, do you know <laughs> what we went through? You understand what I'm saying? Do you know what we went through? You understand what I'm saying? You guys are so spoiled. So we went to the shop the other day to the supermarket. Kayla is like, you have to buy me this doll. I looked at her and I said, listen, you rich kid. <laughs> She's like, I want this. And she really wants that doll. And that doll is 3000 And I told her, I'm not going to pay you that doll. You have a more expensive doll than that one. Yours is Barbie doll. What's wrong with you? And so she, and they have each, each of them have a Barbie doll. So we left. And then we were looking at them and we carry her like, these are rich kids. But uh, they don't appreciate. And the reason they don't appreciate all the things you have given them, because they don't know otherwise. Yeah. Okay, now that you learn, I was talking about my children. I was actually talking about you. So many, many times, we do not appreciate the presence of God. Let me start in the beginning. You don't even appreciate the freedom of worship. There is people across Africa who would like to go to a place in public, in a CBD like this one, and lift their hands and say, Jesus, you're the love of my heart. And they can't. Because the systems, the, the oppression, the principalities have won. Do you understand? They are 100 years behind. Others are 50 years behind. They need not an evangelist. They need intercessors to push prayers for a minimum of 30 years so that legislations can begin in the government so that now they can accommodate men of God who we don't know are even willing to go and reach them. 
So being able to come to a church and sit down and lift your hands, it's a blessing. But we will quickly despise and ignore and take for granted the Father's love and privileges because we don't know otherwise. But this daughter or this son that God goes for and he wins and pulls him out. The, what we are learning on the third point is that he will learn the danger and the torments of darkness and he will appreciate quickly the love of the Father. Amen. Let, let me show you something. In the book of Psalms 18, it says something fantastic. It is a very horrific chapter. Uh, praise the Lord. From verse 4 it says, from, uh, let's do 3. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The sorrows of death come past me. And the floods of ungodly men make me afraid. The sorrows of hell come past about me. And the snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and, he, and cried unto my God, and he heard my voice out of his temple. My cry came before him, even to his ears. Do you understand? Yes. So you can see the Bible, uh, different versions amplifies about the cause of darkness and the cause of death and tangled around me. Now, that person. Those people who go through that begin to really, really appreciate the love of God. Some of you here, you take for granted peace because you do not know what is life without peace. And you don't know how much treasure you have to just have peace that you can laugh out loud. There is people I have met in constant panics, fear, terror. People who live in terror. I've met billionaires who live in terror. And, and, and we normally have those close conversations with my wife and we are like, what? And people don't know. They think money is everything. There's people who can't live their lives. They have all the resources. There's one popular, uh, uh, what do you call, politician who used to, because he had not gotten his money well, he's a very big guy in Kenya, I think he died. But if I say his name, you would know. But it's, it's known that he used to go to Nakuru with three different cars. He would start the journey with a Mercedes, but by the time he's alighting, he has a Volkswagen Beetle with changed clothes. Because he was living in constant fear of his life. So he has to stay incognito all his life. But he's a billionaire. How good is it? Peace is, is a gift. It's a blessing. And peace, right now, when I, say, when I speak about your needs, is when you think about them. Because you have peace. You, and you're even wondering sometimes how can I have so much peace and I don't have much because the peace of God does not require permission of your basic needs praise the Lord now now that you thought that message was evangelistic let me now bring the abstract the Bible says how many of you if you have a hundred sheep, did you, did you get that? Yeah. You have a? Yeah. All right. A hundred is a number that is used to display completion. If you want to explain completion or fullness of anything, you explain it with a hundred. That's why you say it's a hundred percent. Ah, come on now. Yeah. Ah, come on now. Am I talking to intelligent people? Because yes. if you're intelligent, I will struggle to explain it. I'm, I'm trying to paint an abstract. Yes. Okay, did you get me? Yes. 
So a hundred represent fullness. So when God created you, you are not deficient. You do not require another person inside your personality for you to be complete. That's why you cannot be, you know, like those demonic movies, two in one. <laughs> that there is a, a Ruth Mwando that is in you, and, and Christine also lives in you. It's impossible. Ah, come on now. Yeah. Why? Because you were created 100% you. God created you 100% you. If you are listening online, God created you 100% you. Alright, alright, alright. And nobody looks like you. Before you get, you start frowning and, and feeling bad about your life. Nobody is like you. The brothers have been lying to you, sisters. That you're one in a million. No, you're one in seven billion. How dare you chipping me like that? I'm not one in a million. I'm one in B, baby. Praise the Lord. Clap and praise the Lord. <laughs> Tell your neighbor you're one in a B. You're one in a B. And that is seven B. That is seven B. Are you listening? Yeah. Let me draw this uh, picture very clearly. So, it is not a coincidence that when sheep are many, we don't call them sheep. Sheep, a thousand of them is sheep, one of them is sheep. So we have to use, for you to explain how many are they, we have to put a wording before sheep to understand are you dealing with one sheep or two sheep. Uh, anyone go, went to school? Yeah. Even if it was to see a, a friend and go back home? Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you must have learned that. Praise the Lord. We're just walking near the school. Amen. Yeah. We're just touching the school building you learned that. Amen. It's just mm, the Bluetooth in you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> just, just, just fix it up. Amen. Yeah. So, so we have to put a word before sheep to understand is it there is one beautiful sheep, or you can say there is a flock of sheep. So you need to understand it's it's not one now. There are kind of many now. Yes. A thousand uh, flock of uh, numbering up. Oh, a thousand. Yes, I was seeing nobody's having a nest. You are all excellent. Amen. Are we together? Yes. Now, if you get that, let me uh, continue drawing this picture. Uh, you are hundred percent. Right. Now, what the Lord is saying to you, ignore the prodigal son. Now it's you now in the church. Because we normally think this is a message for everyone else in the church. No. No. It is for you now. I come on now. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the Lord is saying, if there is that one percent in you, I will ignore the 99% good in you and go after the 1% weakness in your life. And as I go after that 1% in your life to fix it, <laughs> you will know my disciplinary measures and actions. You will also know the dangers and the torments of hell. Come on now. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You will also know my compassion and love Amen. in protecting you from yourself. In protecting you from self-alienation, from self-rejection, from self-destruction. Come on, praise Jesus. Amen. So the abstract picture here is even in you, my sheep, if I Find there is good in you. Actually, if you read the Bible, the Bible says something very weird. The Bible says, I will leave the 99 in the wilderness. And I don't take anything for granted. Me, I do not ignore details. The Bible says, wilderness. And I'm wondering, why in the first place are you in the wilderness? Because it takes the wilderness to reveal who you are. Ah, come on. Come on. Let's go to Luke 15. Anyone who has found it? 
and one was founded. Ah, oh God. All right, all right. Let's, it says, if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, I feel God here. What will he do? Would he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go search for the one that is lost until he finds it? Meaning it's not, it's not a, a project that he's going to give up on. It's going to be done until it's done. Amen. Oh my God. That's good news and bad news at the same time. Oh Jesus. Amen. Oh my goodness. How many people wish you were not in church today? Praise the Lord. Are you together? Yes. So he says he's going to leave you in the wilderness and go after that weakness. What wilderness? Because it takes wilderness, Antonio, for God to find who you really are. Amen. And when he identifies a character flaw in your life that is not that did not come from him. If he identifies something he did not originally put in your life, he's gonna go after that. And the Lord says he's gonna leave you in the wilderness. Wilderness reminds me of when God went to set free the children of Israel. And he goes there, my goodness, with the plagues. He goes there against them. He's like, whoa, yo, dude, la 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 la, my pe, 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 go. That is Moses shrubbing and stammering. Remember he was a stammerer? Yeah. It's like, yo, Pharaoh, la 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 la. There must have been beats behind. La 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 la, my pe, pe, I'm telling you. After the moment they were and, and, and the plagues that he brought, they were a picture, a picture of what Christ would do. He turned water into blood. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It was an abstract picture of Christ. The price and how far he would go to set you free. So, so when, when Pharaoh can no longer hold the children of Israel, that is salvation. So when he lets them go, that is you getting saved. Say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I come before, I come before you. You understand what I'm saying? And you're going to give or you have given your life to Christ. That is salvation. Then he takes them through the sea. Oh, come on now. He's, he's first of all going to make a way where there's no way because this way he's making has two folds to it. He's going to use the sea. Oh, come on he's going to use the sea to make sure that the enemy you see, you will never see him anymore. Amen. He's going to make sure that that which used to hold you down will no longer hold you down any longer. Number two, the water, as the water was, was splashing on their faces, it is a picture of baptism. Because baptism, the revelation behind baptism by water immersion, talks of when Jesus died, we died with him. When he rose again, we rose up again with him. So when you're baptized, there is a spiritual circumcision ah, come on now. Yeah. that takes place in your spiritual life. And there's things that begins to break. And very soon we're going to be having a day in less than a month for anyone here who would be interested in being baptized. You can come and you'll be, uh, you'll be baptized. Amen. Amen. But we'll first of all teach you at least for one hour what baptism is so that you can understand what you're getting into. And when you get baptized, there's a time I taught about baptism and we sent some people to be baptized. They, they go through the Holy Spirit when they were getting out of, out of the water. We would get out speaking in tongues. It was just a glorious thing. Come on, clap and take forward. Now, you know now they were crossing the, 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 the Red Sea as slaves. But they're going to be baptized and they're going to go to the other side as sons. Do you understand? Yes. So, and the Bible says. 
God, God actually destroys the entire army of Egypt. And he says, these, these, these guys, the enemies is you, you never see them anymore. I own you now. You're mine. I'm, I'm yours and you're mine. Praise the Lord. And, then he, and from there he starts calling them my people. If my people call by my name, shall I humble them? Yes. Ah, come on now. And repent and turn from their wicked ways. I shall hear. And then I'll come and heal that. Yes, yes, yes. Meaning your environment will resemble the quality of your life that you are living. Who you are becoming affects even your environment. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So here we are learning something. That if there is that weakness, if there is that weakness in your life, in your life, that God is going to ignore the 99. After they go to the other side, this is what the Bible says. And I want you to mark this clear. Get me this verse. That he decided there was a shortcut to the promised land of two weeks. Between where they were to the promised land, it was only two weeks to arrive there. But the Bible says, the Lord scratched his head. That's just me. It was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take them the long card to test their heart. So God says, I want to know what is in their hearts. So I'm going to take them on the long card. So he takes them through, wait for it, wilderness. Now, me dealing with the cross issue and delivering you from, from Pharaoh was my business. Did you catch that? Yes. It, it was all dependent on me. But now, now that Pharaoh is dead, and he is dead, dead, he, you, you will never see him. He is no longer a threat. That superpower country has gone down. Do you understand? Yeah. Now, the next thing is, I'm going to now, I've, de- I've killed the Pharaoh you see. Now it is time for me to kill the Pharaoh in you. Now, to kill the Pharaoh in you, I have to take you through a place. Have you ever heard a scripture in the Bible about a place? Whenever men of God, like uh, Moses say, I want to see your glory. God says, I'm going to put you in a place. So our God is a God of places. That's why I told you you are going places. The Bible says that I'll put you in a place. Psalms 24 says, uh, who shall ascend the hill? Who shall come to my holy place? Come on now. So there's a place God will put you in (laughs) for you to know certain things. And it's good to catch the reading quickly to know what is God doing. So that you line up with God quickly and accelerate your process for progress. The process that God brings you into is not to destroy you. Because He loves you. Ah. I I feel people's hearts are not open to this type of message today. I don't know why. But it is going to change your life. Amen. It is a message you cannot run from. Amen. As long as you are a Christian, there is no way you can run away from this message. Because I can't lie to you that God just wants to bless you. And bless you indeed. It's true. But He also wants to work on you indeed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Am I losing friends? No. Oh. My sheep. Amen. Amen. So there is those two weaknesses. So, did you get it? Uh, yes. So the Bible says, uh, I'm going to show it to you, that, that he took them through the wilderness. Now, why a wilderness? Do you know most of the time you feel like you're, you're in a wilderness, like you're in a standstill? And let me tell you, when you feel like you're in a wilderness, there is a weakness God is after. Because you will leave the 99 in the wilderness. You are the 99. He will leave the excellent part of your life, the holiness. You understand what I'm saying? Just hanging in a wilderness. And you will go after that weakness. And you're wondering, God, where are you going after this weakness in the wilderness? Because I do not want you to be distracted with the promised land so that you get it twisted. I don't want the promised land to confuse you. I don't want you to think 
And that the promised land will quickly make you think that God condones. Ah, come on now. So, so I don't want you distracted. So you'll find yourself in a place where he's going to go after that one area. Let me explain something to some people who are refusing violently to believe this is their word. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You could be 99% obedient to God, but you could be having that 1% that is rebellious. And because that is what is going to destroy you, is going to be after it. It's going to ignore the 99%. So you're going to be going, God, but I give offering, but I tithe, but, I, but there's, a, there's a rebellious character in you, very crafty, that he's after. And guess what? He is not going to let it sprout. Why? Because you know this quote. It is only the one bad potato that spoils the whole bag. It is not the whole bag of small potatoes that destroys one. No, no, no. It is one. One. And you're like, is the Lord petty? No, he's not petty. He's wise. He's loving. He's, he's, he's awesome. But let me, that's a quote by men. Let me in sync it with a scripture. The Bible says, it is the small forces. Come on now. I want everybody to look at me. I know the word is powerful. You're praying. Can you ask the brother to stop praying? Don't pray now. Where? Hallelujah. Just, just, just look at me. Yeah, sleep your head with your eyes open. Amen. It's a very good message. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are, are you listening? Yes. Are you being blessed? Yes. Who said perhaps? Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. It is one, even if you don't get anything, go home saying, one bad potato spoils the whole bag. One bad potato spoils the whole bag. I may be having a bad potato in my life and may spoil the whole bag of my destiny. You understand what I'm saying? So God is after that one bad potato. You would be very obedient, but very rebellious in one area. There are some people who are obedient until they have to be under authority. They are only obedient when they are leading themselves. When they are issuing commands when they are the sergeants of their destiny. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. It's possible to be the lost sheep and 99 at the same time. Did you capture that? Yeah. You could be 99% holy, but 1% vulgar, and God is coming for you. You could be loving, but very stingy, but he's coming to fix you. <laughs> you could be a willing servant, but very unsubmissive. You could be gifted, but unguided. You could be an intercessor, but a slanderous one too. <laughs> you could be submissive, but also abusive. You could be dedicated, but disobedient. You could be a hard worker, but careless. Just, 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 just some thoughts to give you to think. You could be excellent, but unavailable. You're excellent, but to yourself. You could be a leader, but not prayerful. So you lead by borrowing others' examples, not your example. <laughs> you could be busy, but unmentored. Being mentored does not mean, you, you're not mentored because you say, this is my mentor. There's a lot of people who don't even say that we are their mentor, but actually we mentor them very effectively because mentorship is a state of the heart. Are you understanding? Yes. Ah, come on now. Yeah. You could love church, but very hateful to people. The whole concept of church, you love it, but you hate people. Would be caring, but very tribal. Or racist. Ah, come on. Are, are we getting something? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. God says, I will ignore the 99 areas. You're doing a great job and go for that one area that can unwrap the whole you. Let me, let me give you a verse. Let's go. This is a beautiful verse. Do you want a beautiful verse? Yes. Or do you want an ordinary verse? Yes. Ah, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Um, okay, okay. Give me a minute. The Bible says, 
And in that day, uh, come on, say, say in that day. In that day. Say in that day. In that day. Um, it says, Matthew chapter 7, 22, it says, Let's start 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Before we even go further, let me first of all tell you something. I'm, I'm about to close. Today I'm not keeping you and lawyers that you danced a lot. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 medication very heavy. I, I want to give it time to sing. Amen? Amen. Uh, Amen. 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 All right, all right. Can we continue? Yes. All right, all right. This is argumenting, zinat, amoxy all together. And you have to take it well, sit it down with a lot of water. Okay, praise the Lord. Uh, you haven't eaten. Uh, praise the, the fundis meal. You know the fundis meal. Praise the Lord, you cannot see the other side of the person you're eating with. That mountain. Amen. Amen. But this is going to change your life. Because God is interested in who you're becoming than what you're getting. Am I losing friends? No. Thank you, Eunice, for saying amen. 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 Who can I pay to say amen? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I need people. Now, stand, you are now interviewing amen. Start saying amen for the next 20 minutes to see if you are qualified. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Who is saying amen? amen. All right, all right, all right. Let's, let's. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, we will enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, let me first of all show you two pictures today. It has an abstract and it has a reality one. The reality one is that the kingdom of heaven exists and after this life is over, you are either going to be in heaven with King Jesus or you will be with Ole Kemunya as he is poking your behind. You understand? Telling you move. You understand? <laughs> all right, all right. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you are, you will have to listen to somebody. Yes. Even if it gets too late and you listen to the devil tell you move, you will still have to obey him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's people, I was sharing yesterday with a friend, and I was telling them, there's people who are so rebellious. They are like the devil. You know the devil, do you know what he said? Instead of serving the king of kings, I better go to hell. Praise the Lord. Amen. And become king of devils. Are you understanding? There's some people, instead of hanging with kings and becoming equal among men, they better go and lead highness. You remember the Lion King movie? Yeah. Very powerful. If you watch it with your big open, you will be blessed. Amen. Amen. So the kingdom of God, there is that heaven, but there is also the kingdom of God here now. Mm. I told you there's two types of people who go there. There's the church people and the kingdom people. Yeah. Kingdom people are graduates of the church people. Yeah. Ah, come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the kingdom, kingdom of God is a realm you enter and live in. Even when you're here or not. Ah, come on now. Now, the kingdom of God, the Bible says, those who, ah, come on now. Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter and manifest the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God has protocols and demands. You cannot just live the way you want and operate under the kingdom favors and the kingdom graces. You have to be efficient. You cannot argue with the protocols of the kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. In Kenya, if you are stopped by the police, and maybe uh, they tell you why you, you, you are drunk and you are driving. You can say, I don't care. <laughs> no, you will care. <laughs> why? Because the protocols, the rules of the land in Kenya. Praise the Lord. Amen. Maybe in Libya they don't care. 
directly because it's a fallen state. But right now in Kenya, there is rules that you, it doesn't matter who you are. You are not going to do them. You are going to adjust. Amen. Amen. So in the kingdom of God, there is protocols that you have to do. Whether you like it, it doesn't matter how many ministers you get to justify. Praise the Lord. Amen. To justify yourself. You may not believe in tithing. But tithing does not care who you are. You may say, I don't believe in holiness. It's okay. It, it is your choice. You live the way you want, but you're not going to live in the world and enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. It's impossible. Right. It's impossible. You have to choose one. You cannot have your cake, eat it, and keep it. Hey, go, go to the Sunday school. Not now. You won't do that now. Later. Go. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Are you understanding? Yeah. Don't you worry, kids, we are going to build them a fun park soon, amen? Yeah. 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 We are working on something, we are working on something. Yeah. Are you understanding? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the Bible says this, so it is possible to miss the entry to the kingdom of heaven even here or now, but, but only the ones who does the will of the Father who is it in heaven. Will is another story, we won't go there. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, did we cast out demons? Now, these are two extremes. One is talking about, did, did we prophesy? Come on now. In your name. And the other part is, did we even cast out demons? We, 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 we were operating in the spirit, prophecy. And we also manifested in the physical. So, so what we did was spiritual and visual. Come on now. But the Bible says, did we even perform miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, meaning I will not cut around the bush. I will tell them, I never knew you. Ah, oh, my goodness, my goodness. Can you say my goodness? Can you say my goodness? All right. My goodness. The Bible says, I never knew you. And the Bible says, You workers of iniquity, get away from me. Oh my goodness. And by the way, this is not a verse for people of the world. Their verse has no discussion. They don't even get the benefit of Jesus talking to them. The Bible actually just declares evil doers, adulterers, we will not even enter. These ones, they somehow it's like they have entered, but they are talking now. They are being told, uh, confusion, you don't have a protocol. You're in the wrong place. So I saw anything about a quack. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, bitch. Mm -hmm. So these are church people. You workers of iniquity. Now, this is the most interesting part. One time I decided to check what does this mean. So I decided to look it up. I went to the history of the history of the word iniquity. And this is what it means. Doing things that God is not part of. Iniquity Iniquity is not drinking and sleeping around. Iniquity is not the obvious things we think about. It goes a bit further. It's doing things that God is not part of. You can even do a marriage that God is not part of. Antonio is here. Praise the Lord. At least I think I have seen Praise the Lord. Are you understanding? You can do things that God is not part of. Praise the Lord. Amen. Since you got saved, when you make mistakes, from today going behind God has forgiven you. Say amen. amen. But going forward, how involved is God in your life? That's a good question. 
But let me focus on one point and I close because I have just a few minutes. The Bible says here, I want you to notice this part. It says, I never knew you. Amen. We did acts. We did acts, religious acts. Praise the Lord. In this church, the reason as leaders we move around the departments a lot of times is because of uh, an error I saw in, in the church. And I'll keep moving departments for a very long time. So get used to it. And I'll tell you the reason I do that is because I try to kill uh, I try to kill uh, the spirit of of works. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I want to enhance teamwork. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, in our team, when they're playing football, every team member has a number. Uh, for the ballers. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm not a, a football fan unless I'm playing. <laughs> I find it. I respect people's interests. But uh, I only watch World Cup and I don't watch all of it. It's the last part. The last five or seven teams. I find that uh, I am busy marketing people who are earning and don't know me. <laughs> and I find that unfair. So I, I agree to hate football because of my cousins. They used to be violently diehards. And I watch them like idiots. Yeah, like say, you know, my team, my people, and uh, they would. And I really, they would spend money on football. They would identify themselves with footballers. I'm like, they don't know you. So, me, I respect people's interests. But I'm not going to change it. So, the other day, I bought a football for me to play with Carlo. You know, I stress some places in the house. Okay. And some of you will come. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, but I love football if I'm playing it. The way we are going to play on 20th, we are going to have church, get together, we are going to go on a field and have a domain. Uh, Springs funding. Amen. 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 20th, Julie Mashudade. Okay. All right. So here we dress modestly. But that day, please don't wear a skirt, okay, ladies? Amen. We don't want Jogono on the corner pray that you roll, amen? <laughs> God is working on him. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I win. So, so just wear a nice shirt. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get something, you yeah, understand? There's no nice shirt and maybe a long shirt, amen? Yeah. Just, just, maybe to have fun. We're going to have a cup, amen? amen. And uh, just have fun, and uh, the winner will get something, amen? amen. And, uh, so let's plan on that. And uh, I can see uh, she's dancing, she's like, I'm not going to be here. But so she's a choir of the will of God. <laughs> so, so <laughs> praise the Lord. So, so in, a, in a football a team, it is numbers. You understand? Yeah. Messi is number? Seven. All right, seven, ten. Some of you are just guessing. Eight, ten. All right, all right. So, so, so there's different. Uh, so, so there's some people who are married to their number. And they talk about their number. I mean, this is the number I play. But let me tell you, that does not help in the kingdom. You don't need to be identified by the number you play. You need to be identified by being, are you ready for it? Yes. Team Heaven. I, I, are, you, are you rooting for the team? So, so that's why I don't want anyone to build a, an industry in their own tiny department. So you could be serving in this department for now, but, but you are Team Heaven. You're not going to let the work of God capsize when you're watching. You're ready. You have to be multifunctional. You understand what I'm saying? Because the moment you build your own kingdom, then you have no capacity to handle the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God destroys the kingdom of men. Amen. 
so that's why we, we keep switching the departments. Because the moment we get people who can function without any attitude, with excellence, in anything they are given, they're like, all I need is, uh, where, where can I support? Because the Holy Spirit is the coach in the kingdom of God. Ah, uh, you get it. Yeah. He's the one who knows, uh, you go, you go now. You understand? You play here. But you cannot go there, I have a plan. Yes, I have. No, no, no. Your plan has to submit to the, a, a team's plan. Meaning, because you may have to understand what is the team plan or the goalkeeper or the striker, because that's a bit of nuisance, then you're going to trust the one giving the plan. What, what, what does the Holy Spirit want us to function? Because I don't want you to be limited. Come on now. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I think the churches that move bishops around do a fantastic job. I support that. And by the way, Chris, that's how we started. Yes. Back in the day, bishops would, you would run a, a district for a couple of times and move to another one. Yeah. That's the right way. And any church that does that, they're doing the right thing. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Because, because it makes people not own. So that Mokami does not say, the worship team is mine. <laughs> so if you are going to hell, we go hell together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you are ra- raising all kind of kids, no, 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 no. You're like, for now, I'm serving here, I'm going to do my best. Mm-hmm. What's needed? What's needed? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if we get those character in the kingdom of God, you're like, no, no, no. I don't own a space. I, I, all I own is my love for God. Are you understand? I'm ready to start anywhere and anywhere. That now is what I call Team Heaven. And the Bible says, we did acts. And, and, and by the way, it's a very dangerous thing. And there are some people sometimes from Noah Unis, I may tell you, ah, relax. Don't serve. And sometimes I may ask you to do that. And ask you just, just listen and serve. And do you know, one of the times I do that, and I've done that to most people who are close to me. There's a time I did that to Christine, and Christine would not get it. Uh, that time she was named Christine. She's like, no, God, I was a leader where I was. I had came with leadership as well. Like, oh, I sit down. <laughs> and one of the many reasons I do that, and that's why she's amazing right now. That's why she's among the few who, cannot, who don't have to run a department, and she's still functioning effectively. Unalani <laughs> There's some, there's some of you who cannot function without a department. But for her, how did I coach her that way? Because I wanted to kill that spirit of works. It is very possible in the church to think that all that matters to you is this work. It is what you're delivering. It is work. It is work. And in the midst of those works, you miss the whole point. You even miss God. You begin to use your works, darling, to measure your spirituality. And so many Christians are there. That's why if you find some ladies serving food, the way they talk to you is like a Glock 9. <laughs> what are I saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're like, the, the things they will say, Yesterday, uh, there's, somebody, there's a, a mother, a church leader, who messed up some people, and I went there to talk to her. I said, listen, what you're doing is wrong. Because I'm like, ah, he's like, let's go into a kitchen. Then, uh, then uh, she even turned around and told Ashosho there, from you guys, go and sit down. I said, no. Why does Ashosho have to have a before we finish talking? Why? What are you doing? So she she got offended, but I think as well told her my mind, which I will not repeat here. <laughs> what, why? Because you can also communicate without shouting, without being harsh. You understand know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can also go and say kindly, this line is for the family. Yeah. Do you mind please? Sorry for the inconvenience. Can I move you from here to that side? And because you had already lined up for three well, for that means, let me walk you there and cut the line for you. Are you understanding? Yeah. Can't, you, can't you fix? Can't you divide the table and serve two, from two corners? Can't you talk to your people to haste them? Uh, can, can't we? What are you looking for? Are, are you understanding? Yeah. And, that, and God will be seen. You don't have to shout. You don't have to insult somebody. And, and, and I was telling my wife, I find it 
extremely dumb where people use one day event to hurt people permanently. Yeah. Let me tell you, if, if it was your wedding, Christian, and I'm serving, even if you had instructed me not to serve five people, specifically, I don't care about you, it's only one day. I don't care the instruction you give me, I'm going to love people and treat them well. Because I've been left with the people. That's wisdom. <laughs> Did you see that? It is only for one day. It's only for one day. Yeah. You see, those works makes you so hostile. And that even none go again begin to question your salvation. Yeah. And you're wondering, tomorrow is Sunday, you'll be there saying, I have a song. I've been saved for 28 years. What are you talking about? We don't care. Yeah. Why were you not saved yesterday? <laughs> so so I don't want anyone that God has brought under me to have that spirit. That's why I operate that way. Yeah. I don't want you to think this is my kingdom. Yeah. Abdallah Kudala. This is my territory. <laughs> are you understanding? <laughs> no. No, even me, I do not see any church member like I own them. Years ago, many years ago, 14 years ago, 12 years ago, the Holy Spirit told me, like them, love them like they are yours, hold them like they are not. So that you're not disappointed. They don't belong to you. You didn't die to, uh, for them. The most you can do as a man of God is die two hours to minister to people. You just sacrifice. They give the time. I come on now. So we cannot go building kingdoms. Praise the Lord. And by the way, even as a minister here, I minister with a clock in my spirit. Because God has spoken to me over years ago, countries I'll go and do some work, places I'll go and start some work. So even here, I know I'm not here forever. Yeah. Yeah. So even when you send me a message, today I will not be available. I don't care. I am on time. Me, I'm closing in my I'm closing in my time. Yeah. There's a time, the time will be over. And I will not be around. I told you the other day, we are currently sitting on an opportunity to relocate to Canada. We have everything paid for. It has been there for the last five and a half years, or five and a half months. And it is not a job. No, it's not a job. It's a, it's a, it's a shareholding offer. For, for, for Carol to own the company she works for, and for me to get a, 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 a slice of what I do. And they are providing everything. And we are calculating, we are seeing, uh, we'll be earning maybe 10 million a month. And after six months, it's very easy to be earning 100 million, according to real numbers. But God. But, yeah. And when we pray, for the last five and a half months, God has said nothing. I would come here and tell you, the Lord say, arise and shine, and all of it, uh, yeah, I'm calling you to the West Indies, uh, yes, this time you will twin for real. No. <laughs> so, so we are not going anywhere. So we have been declining those opportunities consistently. And the more we decline, the more people are living up. You understand? It will be good for me, it will be good for my children in the future. It will save us and protect my children from any Ebola outbreak. <laughs> and whatever, who knows what politicians may decide to do. You know what I'm saying? But it is extremely selfish. Because the moment I got saved, it is no longer my life. That is, salvation is, it is, is it's a divine disruption. Ah, come on now. It is a divine disruption. It's no longer my life. So it is not just you who have had decisions, Alex. We also have to make the decisions. So this is not something to go and ask President. I have not even told him yet. Should I go? Should I not go? No. We have already made that decision. It was not some, it's not even something to discuss even with Carol. We both know. No. At this time, no. But there's days in the future, there's even some countries that there's some responsibility we're supposed to go and do certain assignments. And they will come. And that day will come, and will be, I guess, uh, tomorrow, you will be announced. And uh, Ruth here will be minister, she will, she will be your pastor. Hey, praise the Lord. Yeah. It's an example, don't be scared. Praise the Lord. Why are you shaking? Stop shaking. <laughs> are you excited? You're like, yes! No, praise the Lord, I don't know which one. It's, it's an example. You understand what I'm saying? And we'll have to move to the next chapter. 
That's why we are not serving and ministering kidogo kidogo. We are giving our all. Why? Because we know uh, there's a time coming where there will be no time. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Am I making sense? Yes. I can't tell you how long. God has not given me the specific. It could be six months, it could be two years, it could be ten years. Who knows what? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. But when that time comes, we move on to the next chapter. Because yeah. I would not like to even tell you God is like to save Kenya alone. No. There's a world. He died for, for God. John 3 16 says world. Does it say world? Yeah. yeah, it does not say Kenya. Of course, we'll have the world that he died for Kenya. No, he died for the world. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So that's why I function. Some of you may not understand me, but if I, as I don't, I, you, the moment you are used to a particular department, I disrupt you again. I'm working on you. And I'm studying you. I'm trying to see. Do you understand? Are you becoming multi talented, multi skilled to serve? And the moment we get to that level where we have those team heaven, then the church is ready to explode. Amen. I'm telling you. The moment, the moment you get people who can function as in heaven, who cannot wash, they're like, ah, ah. They, they see, they're like, ah, I need to clean this church. They don't even require permission. They come, they're like, it's not my department, but they're very clean it. Even unanimous. When you start getting people functioning to fix things, to move, it becomes a machine. Ah, come on now. Do you know in the military, everyone is trained to do everything when it comes to war? Yes, even medical doctors, they, they, you have to get weapons training. All of you, before you specialize, before you say, now me, I'm a nurse in the army, or I'm a chef. Even the chefs know how to kill. They know how to fight. So we have to have at least a level where we can function in any area before we specialize. Uh, come on now. Amen. It's about to heavy. So the Bible says, workers of iniquity. Amen. Amen. I did not. Now, I want us to, fo to focus on something here. The Bible says, I never knew you. That's my main focus as I close. And the question is, Kumbe, the Lord is interested in knowing you. The Lord wants to know you. For a very long time, Christian, you have been hearing the word of God being ministered to you, for instance, that God knows, He, he, he knows you. But, but, but the real scripture, especially the misused one in Jeremiah 29 11, does not say God knows you. It says He knows the plans He has for you. For God to know you is going to be a journey. And God is interested in knowing you. Amen. 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 Well, let, me, let me say something. The omniscient God, the omnipresent God, the omni-excellent God, who knows everything. Praise the Lord. Amen. I see him in so many scriptures refusing Amen. Amen. Refusing to interfere. It is like uh, it is like what we do in tech. In tech, there is some development programs we can develop that we can actually access and even switch your phone on remotely. But we we choose not to. Are, are you understanding? And and, and 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 we tell you the choices you have made through privacy policy. You remember that policy agreement that you, you say, okay, that you never did very long? <laughs> ah, that, that has in fact explaining to you why we will not listen to you at night when you're snoring. Why we will not maybe analyze your transactions. Are you understanding? Yeah. Now, the same thing if you understand that, God can access everything because he's the all wise God. But he chooses to let you reveal yourself to him. He does not want to invade your privacy. So he wants to know who you are. That's why the Bible says he took them. Ah, come on now. Yeah. He took them through the wilderness that he might know 
what was in their heart. Ah, Jesus. Amen. Oh, God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me show you a scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to the book of uh, Deuteronomy 8.2. It says, Thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness. To humble thee. Oh my goodness, now, now you're tripping. But now that's the chart we don't like. Can the, and the question is, can the Lord take you through uh, a journey to humble you? Uh, I want you to answer so that I'm not guilty of teaching tough things today. Amen? Yes. Can the Lord? Yes. Okay, this is like, I'm not opening this one. Yeah. Stick with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take that. Can the Lord take you through a place to humble thee? Yes. Why would God deliver you through a place to humble you? Why would God develop humble you? Because through being humbled, or what we call humiliation, you develop humility. And God resists the proud. And the journey God is walking with you, He does not want to get to a point where He resists you. Let me now, thank you Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, give me to find examples, because this is becoming too complex. Uh, so that I help. Let me let me let me just do two guys. Karis Kujapa with your girlfriend. Come here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Stand here. Praise the Lord. You can hold your hands. I know you want to hold hands. Praise the Lord. They are acting. Tell your neighbor they are acting. They are acting. Yeah, stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's important to know that. Amen. So, so now, these two, uh, these these two individuals, uh, let's now call them a couple. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, uh, the Bible says, uh, let me let me read it for you again. Uh, that the Lord led you these forty years in the wilderness to humble you. Come on now, Amen. to humble you. Now, in this relationship. In, our, in this church, we have a class, it's called Coating Right Class. You understand? Yeah. I started that class from the teachings God gave me when I was dating and uh, when I was starting my relationship with my wife. And, uh, and those things that God taught us were profound. They were profound. They changed our lives. And we've been teaching uh, the couples joining there. Don't worry, you will also join if you are not there. Amen. Amen. You will get somebody, I will talk to you, praise the Lord. Uh, let us be involved, amen. amen. Yeah, whether you join illegally or legally, yeah. <laughs> yeah, illegally is when you go and get yourself a husband or a wife, then you say, We're in a relationship, I've already proposed, I know what I'm doing, this is the will of God. It's okay, you join, praise the Lord. <laughs> you, you suffer because you started the whole thing on your own, you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, at least with the teaching, we are going to uh, what we call a padding. We are going to pad the pressure. You remember back in the day during corporal punishment, when the, the day uh, we used to wear a jeans short inside? You understand? Uh, for a group of schools, don't get what I'm saying. You understand? That was school, it's not prison. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we suffered. Yes, praise the Lord. Are you understanding? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Okay. Now, why am I talking about quoting my class? The reason I normally teach the, the basis of this class is relationships don't go wrong, they start wrong. And the moment it starts wrong, it will go wrong. The, the, the issue is not if it will, is when it will. Because it will go wrong. Because it started wrong. You start building a house. And, and like on this side, and you can see it's this way. But then it's done, the roof will have touched the ground. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so. Ah, yes. If this start a relationship, and this just acting, praise the Lord. Nice. So just if you're trying to propose, you can go ahead. <laughs> oh, you're angry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Francis is very angry. Like that, Jose Nino's there. All right, all right, all right. Praise the Lord. Uh, so, if they start dating, raise the Lord. 
the concept of putting the right class is that we, we deal, it's not fun, but it's not fun. If, when you start quoting right, it means it's not going to be enjoyable. If, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you are dating and you, you normally sing a song the day you're meeting, you're like, la, 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 la. you eye on the, 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 the handkerchief, you, la, la, ta, la, la, la. then you're going back to the date. Uh, that's not the quoting right class I'm talking about. The true one, you don't even want to see him. But if you join our class, the things I'll teach you, if you obey, you understand? You won't even be looking for what? To see each other. And most of the time, you will cry in several days. Not because of love, not because I'm like, what do I do with this love? No! It's not love. You're like, God, you missed me out. You understand? That's what I'm talking about. Because the whole concept is reversed. Because what Hollywood has been teaching you is not real. And you can prove it by the fact that their weddings don't last. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Their weddings don't last. Amen. To Mazen, you are being mentored by Angelina and Joel. What are you talking about? <laughs> you didn't read the news, it was yesterday. <laughs> so, so if, if this wonderful couple, as wonderful as they are, they are like Mazen, and that's what I have to show you. Eh? What be PhD? Why? That John goes and I come out and see that you're PhD. You know what I mean? See what I did? You understand what I'm saying? So they decide nobody can tell us anything. And, and they decide, uh, whatever you do. And they don't address the issues. Because the whole concept of it is addressing issues, all of them first. It is, it is normally a drill. Because coaching is a drill of marriage. So, so, so the training we take through the people is drills. It's just that I don't even have enough time, energy, and the resources to meet them often. But we meet them Monday. Now I meet them as in a while. Praise the Lord. As in maybe four months. Because uh, sometimes I'm so overwhelmed. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I'm trusting God. So if they start that uh, relationship in their own way, after one year, now step forward, they have worked one year, uh, two, three years they have married. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen uh, couples in public, uh, like the way Trump uh, was trying to greet the wife and the wife was eating the hands? Uh, you have seen some uh, two exposes, uh, humiliating things, uh, you cringe. There's a time I was with this group of leaders, they were in the car when I was a young, uh, young, young man. And uh, uh, this couple would insult each other. Hey, I would feel manze, manze wana ongele shamari. And I would feel like, ah, yeah, I should not be a most scared car. Uta squeeze if you when you turn into vapor. <laughs> then you get out of your You put yourself back together. So that's what I was feeling in the car. And I was telling God, hey, I don't want this when I get married. And, and God was gracious. It's a long story, very long story. Uh, God revealed to me some of these teachings. Let me tell you, to protect that humiliation in public, you need to go and work in secret. The couples who don't do the work in secret, the humiliation becomes public. And it doesn't matter how much you try to cover smoke with all the garments and curtains. Finally, the fire will burn through them. (laughs) And somebody will call an alarm. And call the city council. Or if you're outside Kenya, you call the firemen. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. If you say firemen, you're talking about. <laughs> Those are the firemen in Kenya. <laughs> did, did you understand that? Yeah. Let go of my answer so that you don't start sounding at this time. You understand what I'm saying? I don't go. So, so, so if you don't work in secret, so the point is, the Bible says that the Lord, ah, come on now, yes. did you get that? Yes. That he led ye through the wilderness to humble you. Why is the Lord humbling you in the wilderness? Because he does not want to humble you in the promised land. Oh. So, so, why do you have to go through, is bring an offering? Oh, okay. It's a joke. I was joking. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord. 
kao je zlo ako i brzo. Kada znaj, kada si profetik. Kama unađuva, unađuva. So... Praise the Lord! There must be engagements to the men. Kama ni aze? Praise the Lord, kwa engagement sante. Hallelujah! And we will say, this is not an act. Amen. So, so, so the Bible says he took them through the wilderness. So it's good you go through the quoting right class, go, the right process, hallelujah, to humble each other through it so that you can reign now in marriage. But the only way you can reign in marriage if the foundation is worked on properly before the marriage. But if you don't work on it, you're not going to reign. So now that we're in marriage, me and my wife, there's some issues we only hear there when we're counseling people. They're like, oh, that, there is that. Eh? We don't know. Because when the foundation is right, there's some threats that will never come to your door. There is a way you can build a house and there is no threat that can come to you. That even wakora kikuja wako like that. Unarudi kulala. Because you're like, it is unpenetrable. And that's the way I want you to build your marriage. And that's what the Bible says. Amen. That he took them through the 40 years to humble them and to prove and to know. Ah, come on now. What was in your heart? Whether thou would keep his commandment. Whether you can be able to stick to his covenant. He wanted to test what was in their heart. And later God gave a report. He said, these men have hearts of stone and they have rebellious necks. They said they are stiff necked. So it was like, I cannot move them to my purpose. There's even a point he got. He said, uh, they are going to live to die. Because at this point they are useless. And it was a fight between him and Moses because God was saying, I'm going to annihilate all of them. And from you, I get a generation that can obey me. Because they have frustrated me. Not because of gold. Gold I gave them. Not because of property. I gave them land. But the problem now is their heart. Their, their core. And the question today is, what is it in your core? Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on now. So the Bible says, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, it starts by God saying, I know the plans I have for you. I know the plans I have. Yes. Now, it is like this gentleman, after he has proposed and she has said yes. Can you say yes? yes. That's you should have asked him questions uh, did you? Anyway, it's a joke. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes. After this gentleman uh, proposes and she says yes, say yes, and then says yes, yes, yes. <laughs> then uh, Moya comes, praise the Lord. Then he's giving flowers, you know, can I something else now? Praise the Lord. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. Uh, but brothers, it's good to check with your wife. Uh, uh, your, your wife to, uh, to be. Yes, yes, uh, so that you don't do those things. Some of them, like Carol, that would be sour. And she's like, ah, I don't want that foolishness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. There's some people who don't thrive in attention. Yeah. And there's some people who thrive in it. They actually live for it. Yeah. So, 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 so if you are proposed, she has said yes, and you're now preparing, you begin to prepare. Yeah, you understand? Begin to prepare. You're going on a fast days. <laughs> <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Do not... <laughs> Alright, all you need to do to, for you to prepare to go for the first date is just to wake up. You understand what I'm saying? I'm like, ah! That's my first date! Alright, so he's going to his first date. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So, 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 to me, Jeremiah 29 11 is like, the Lord going on the first date with you, Mercy. You have given your life to Christ, and then it is the first time the Lord 
Because I want you to check the phrasing of Jeremiah 29 11. Read it for me. 29 11. Let me show you something hidden there. Come on now. Are you ready? Yes. I, I, I want to close with some excitement. Are you excited? Yeah. yeah. Uh, come on. Let me hear some shout of joy. Yes. He's talking to you, but he's addressing himself. For I know. Now oh, come on now. Yeah. So 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 he's he's it is the Lord now coming to the first date after the proposal. You have received Jesus and he's there saying, I know the plans that I have for you. Amen. So he's on the way there, just like for him, he's going on a date, go there and start coming slowly. He's going, the Lord is coming to uh, to get the first date with you, and he knows the plans. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's why the, the gentleman, if, especially if you're raised uh, by me, I'm um, going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Praise the Lord, you cannot just go there looking, uh, wearing a balloon, you understand? <laughs> you have to wear a nice jacket, you have to work on your hair, don't look like a surprise, you understand? <laughs> <laughs> so when you get that, you have a plan, you must have a plan. You don't go for that first date and you're asking Susie, why would you like to eat? You understand? And Susie is like, why would you like to eat? You understand? Uh, you don't know, especially at this hard times, Shadi. Don't, 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 don't ask that question. What if she, what if she says, I want to do Crown Plaza? You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, between you and, and poverty, you know what I'm saying? Sandwich between poverty and billions is only 600. So, so 600 does not give you permission to ask such a question. And she's like, can this kill them? Now, now, whatever you do will be useless. You know what I'm saying? So don't ask a question you're not ready for the answer. Yeah. So, 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 so go there like Jesus, for I know the plans. Turn the EV. Turn the EV to become. I want to answer. Uh, turn the EV to go to Singapore. Yeah. Ah, come on. Yeah. Brothers are not supporting me. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Are you understanding? Yeah. So if your plan was to go and, uh, and stare at the church, uh, statue or in... Uh, in Archive Square, you understand what I'm saying? You go there and just discuss. Maybe she is into history. You understand what I'm saying? Like, who is this? Ah, uh, who is this? You are empty mama. And they like, it is not an empty mama. I think it is a uh, praise the Lord. So, so if it is going to bless you, then it's okay. It's going to be so, so, so the Lord says, for I know the plans. Wait, look like somebody is a plan, you know, be excited. So, so the Lord says, oh, I know the plans are for. Uh, are you ready for this? Yeah. So he's coming to you with a plan. So he has a plan for you. Do you remember I talked about the relationship factor? Yeah. So, so, so the Lord is coming to start a relationship with you. So he comes and says, uh, can you admit a minute? Because yeah. yeah. I've opened a vein and I have to close. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, when a, when a surgeon is working on somebody, if you say the surgery is two hours, you can tell him the time is over, you have to watch here for. You understand? Yeah, sometimes it extends, you know. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to finish this. I thought you were enjoying it. Yeah. Perhaps, who's saying perhaps? Praise the Lord. Francis. So, so, when, so he's going there with her? Yeah. Ah, come on now. Help me finish. He's going there with a plan. Ah, thank you. He's going there with a plan. Now nah, nah, go there with a the plan. Eh? You have a plan. He's there. I know she goes there going like, oh, I wish they picked me. I'm such an actor. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You sit down. I'm here. Yes, uh, be careful what you wish. I'm here, I'm here. Yes, uh, sit back, sit back, sit back, sit back. Put your hand on the sash. So you can act. So, so he's coming there and he has a plan. You can discuss. Yes, act, act now. <laughs> so, so, so let me ask, where are you going? Where are you taking her? <laughs> oh, pizza mojo. <laughs> fancy. Very fancy. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Like I you, so we are bones. Praise the Lord. It's Ten shillings. And they allow you to carry your own loaf. 
You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> now you are there communicating. And Francis is there and he says, by the way, many people do not know. My first name is not Francis. Me, I'm Edward. <laughs> so, so that's Francis on a day now. <laughs> so as a lady, Alice is there going like, what? What? I love it. Oh my goodness, my Edu. My Edu. What's the love? I'm here, Edu. Where's the love? You know what I'm saying? So Alice is there going, and, and, and she, he didn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're now getting to know each other. Ah, come on now. Yeah. So the Lord has brought you there in that day to know who you are. You understand? And she's there expressing herself. And there is conversations there. Are you ready for something? Yeah. Rule number two. Rules of God knowing you. Did you catch the first one? Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. You have to be available. You have to create time. And, and, and let me tell you something. I do not take any excuse even when I'm having leaders meeting and, or any meeting with anyone. You can tell me the excuses that you're busy. Actually, I say busy to me is an acronym for be, being and acceptance. You understand what I'm saying? Don't be busy. You understand what I'm saying? Be organized. I say busy is not an excuse because you create time to what is important. It was as simple as that. You can tell me that I was so busy I was not available. No, you create time to what is important. It's as simple as that. The moment something is important to you, you're going to move the heavens. Mm. Praise the Lord. Because I, I, I grew up raising people and, and they would mix me up. Because somebody is telling me, oh, oh, that prayer meeting, my parents did not give me permission. Then, the, the prayer request they are telling me to pray for them is so that they can go and, and start uh, studying in the U.S. I'm wondering, will you go with your mom now? <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So on one side, you're telling me you're free to go and live in another country alone. But for prayer meetings, I would find the use at that time. Uh, they needed permission of the parents. Then they get married and I wonder, what will you do now? Praise the Lord. Ah, are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, number two, it's a law. Deep conversations bad deep relationships. Amen. Amen. Just give me three minutes, I'm going to run through this, okay? Deep fellowships bad deep bond. Even in your own relationships and even in your future, for the right person, it's going to be a bond. Say bond. bond. But if you have deep conversation with the right person, you're going to have a, a bond. If you have it with the wrong person, it's going to be a bond age. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, it's true. Nobody's clapping. Yes, Lord. So, so for you, the Lord here wants to have a conversation with you, and for that relationship to go deep, the Bible says in the Book of Psalms that deep calls to deep. Ah, come on now. So you must have deep conversations. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You must be able to have deep conversations. So the more deep the conversations are, the deeper the relationships will be. Amen. Amen. That's why you're not supposed to tell your deepest secrets to strangers. You can't meet somebody in a matatu and all of a sudden they know half of your life. Amen. Amen. That's risky. Ah, come on now. You have to reveal in your relationship with God, some of these rules are very important. You must, you, you, some of you, the question is, are you prayerful? Do you have a prayer life? Um, are you understanding? Yes. Now, is your prayer life, is the Lord a P.O. box? 
You know some people, the Lord is a P.O. box, but you just go to sign in, prayer request. Lord, I want, I want, I want, I need, I need, I need. Remember, remember, remember. Oh, weekend, you are, I see the blood. It's like a spell. Some, a bit of enchantment. <laughs> some, some people, that's their prayer life. But it has to shift from just visiting the Lord to what Samson 91 says, He who dwells. Ah, come on now. Dwells is different with visits. Not who visits. He who dwells in the presence. If you go to a fantastic uh, designer like Ruth Bryan and you ask her to work on your dress, then you go after two days when she has just cut the material, you take the material and say, I want it the way it is. You know what I'm saying? Will you, will you go home with a dress? You have to sit down, you need to sit down and wait for her to go through the entire process for you to go home with a dress. True or false? So there's some people, they throw the material to God and go for the material in the evening. And that's why, no matter how much you go to pray, you still go with anxiety. Because you went to send the, the P.O. box, you went to send the letter. These are our requests. But it's supposed, the Bible says, don't leave the king's presence in haste. They have to grow to a level where it's a conversation. Yeah. Where you're opening up to your daddy, yes. to your father, to your friend. Mm -hmm. Where you can share deep secrets with him. Mm -hmm. ah, come on. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. I remember when I was growing up in the Lord, I would go to the present. Because you remember when I gave you that testimony, there's a time, the Lord, you can sit down. It's okay. I'm going to manage. Praise the Lord. Yeah. A clap for them. I told God I want you to make me a man of excellence. He told me, be naked before me. You remember that story? Yeah. It was not talking about removing clothes, it was talking about being honest. To have deep conversations with him. And I remember I, I, I came up and I took the relationship so serious and, I, and it became so real. To the level sometimes I will be extremely tired in my hour of prayer. And I will tell the Lord, I'm so tired today. I can't pray. I'm feeling so beat down. This and this happened. Then sometimes I will start that conversation telling him how I'm feeling. I end up spending an hour or two in prayer. Which started as a conversation. And sometimes, I'll be honest with you, I, I was too drained, too destroyed to pray. And I would now, I remember, I don't know why, uh, why I started this, I would write a letter to God. I would write a letter and leave it there on the table. When I was a single young man, I told him, that's my letter. This is what I would have told you if I had the energy. And I would go to sleep. And I remember, because I always uh, sleep with uh, some worship music playing. I remember nights where I would wake up, and they still happen. And uh, in the middle of the night, I would find that I was crying the whole night. I was worshipping and I didn't know. Because the presence of God refused to leave, so the Lord was with my spirit. It was just that my body is sleeping because the body is tired. But the Holy Spirit is with my spirit, fellowshipping, because he is welcome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you understanding? Yes. Are you understanding? Yes. I want to say something else beautiful. So this deep conversation will back a deep relationship. The people who, the reason, especially ladies, you get heartbroken by your best friends is because, it's not because of anything. It's simply because they know your darkest secrets. Yes. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So you're like, how dare you leave me when you have all that investment, you can just walk away. It is like the CIA, where James Bond removes the gun, MI6. And it's like, what are you going to do now that you have this very top secret information? When you stare at what you are saying, then you are staring at the gun, 
So in that movie set, they are telling you, you may have either join us or die, because you can't live with this level of secrets. Are you getting the joke? Yes. Or are you watching the movie? Then some of you are like, then what happens? Praise the Lord. <laughs> we are not here for a movie now. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Are you being blessed? Yes. Or is it perhaps? So, so that's why we get heart broken. But the Lord, you can trust Him. You can share. You can have a conversation must see, with the Lord with how you're feeling. Yes. Let me ask you a question, all of you. Who's the closest person in your life? Alright. No, it's okay. Say it. Who's the closest person in your life? God. Yeah, it should be God. But let's test if it's God. The moment you're going through the toughest situation, somebody snatches your phone, God forbid, you go through a situation, who do you call first? God. Most people don't call. I'm not saying the way you scream when the guys are going to hold them. That's obvious. If you're born in Kenya, even, even atheists shout to Jesus. Huh? One minute. They, they are a believer. But most of you call your friends. They're like, man, I'm going through this tough thing. And, and God is not, he's the end result. He's the last one to tell. When you have good news, who do you tell? You should tell God. Lord, I'm so excited about this. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Yes. Deep conversations brings cements a deep, deep relationship. But if this bond, if this bond is with the wrong person, it will become a bondage. Uh, the last one. Or oh, you have a space for two. Yes. If you're full, if I design your full, I can leave it there. Your space? Yes. You, you are honest with whom you trust. Amen? Mm-hmm. And I want to tell you, you're honest with whom you trust. Because there cannot be a relationship without honesty. The opposite of honesty is suspicion. And you can't live in suspicious world. It, it, is, it is draining to be suspicious. And you can, and there's some people who are not spiritual, but they're suspicious. They're like, oh, what's that presence? Is the devil here? You know, you know those people who live <laughs> suspicious of insects? And I know there's a level in witchcraft and sorcery where, you know, insects and all that, I don't want to talk about it right now. You know that? It can be used for criminal, demonic activities. Are you understanding? Yeah. But there's some people who live in a, a suspicious world. They see an insect, they see the devil, they're like, wow, no, you, you are the devil. Amen? <laughs> they see a snake outside the compound. They're like, this is the devil. No, 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 no. Snakes are good creatures. Snakes are not of the devil. So we are, we are really like, Are the scales of your religious eyes falling? Did you know, without snakes, the world would plunge into one of the biggest plagues you've ever seen. The plague of, uh, I don't know if it's 1902 uh, or, or something, was caused by rats. And the number one enemy, eater of, la- of rats in the cycle of life, is snakes. So God, in his wisdom in creation, to balance the earth, he gave us snakes. And let me tell you, these rats you find outside, if there was no snakes to manage them, you have no idea. There's no animal in this planet that multiplies like rats. They actually say two rats can multiply in, in a quarter year to become over a thousand rats. Yes. That's why people back in the day used to insult people, they would say you're getting children like. Right? <laughs> yeah, and our shield was signed. Our shield. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because back in the day, people would get 20 children. You know? so, 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 snakes, they are the most used by 
uh, people in the dark side witchcraft and all that. Eh? But it does not mean that uh, you cannot again be suspicious of every snake. You go to snake park and you're like, oh God, look at the witchcraft. No. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> I'm not asking you to play with them. You understand what I'm saying? I have a friend, a Muzungu, a friend of mine who actually has a pet that is a snake. Uh, I think I will be sure to the first talk because this is actually a time in Numa Mkono. But because it will be me, at if you go to the cage, you can get a new one. So I can eat a food that you can eat, you can eat. But uh, he took care of it. These are things that are normal in the US. Actually, you know John Dust? One of his kids for a long time has had an iguan. You know iguana? Yeah. <laughs> uh, when he comes in, he will tell me the story. Yeah, but I know some Christo people go there and say, look at the witchcraft. Eh? You know, where? Where? <laughs> 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 they just shut down there. Why do you want to have this on a man? Ah, come on. Man. The devil is a thief. Yeah. I know Africa because of our background. This is a very hard sale. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because of our background of witchcraft and all, we, we try to tell you the importance of, and it's important, especially uh, in the size of Ukambani, for people to know, uh, so that we don't kill snakes so heavily, because they can easily be an epidemic. You understand? There's a way, there's things you can use in your house to keep them away from the house, but in the forest, let them stay there. You cannot make it your calling to go in the forest to kill snakes. <laughs> I'm trying to balance your, your religion so that you don't find Satan in everything. When I want to walk you over, then you fully go as fully in a book as well. Why is it trying to come out? Is it going to be your auntie? This is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to Nivewe uli funika maji in a boil, so the vapor di mekoka kifuniko. Kika manguka, there's nothing devilish. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is it helpful? You, you're honest with whom you trust. Honest is nakedness. So when the Lord was telling me be honest, be, be naked before me, he was talking about honesty. If you can be naked before God, he can dress you up in, with righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. You can be naked, but some of you are, can't be naked. You're too important before God. That's okay, but before God, you're so important. You're so special. You're so important before Him. The Bible says in John 15, without God, we are absolutely nothing. So it's good to go with that. And the Bible says, our righteousness. When you go there, feeling, Mazemisi Kamo Kami. No, me, I'm not like Antonio, me, manze. Me, I'm not like Antonio, me, Antonio, I'm not like 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 Antonio, I'm not but it's Lord, I'm praying for Jesse to become a real bitch humble, Lord. Why are you saying that? Because you feel you're more humble than me. All right, praise the Lord. So you need to be honest. Go before God. You understand, Joram? And you tell the Lord, Christian, Lord, I am a wicked man. Ah, come on. Go there like Isaiah. My tongue is wicked. Who shall save me? Deliver me. That's the only way you can be helped. But if you are there, very cool. I'm like, what's hmm? All the couples we have cancelled over the years. The greatest challenge, the, the, the day uh, every couple that we have ever cancelled, the time that their lives begin to shift as a couple, it is the moment. Are you ready for this? Yeah. I'm, I'm noticing every time I talk about relationship, there's a, an extra attention I'm getting. <laughs> So I will hold on this, you see what I'm going to do, and share it when I'm finishing. All right, praise the Lord. I know you, I know you. Let me give it to you because I love you. Praise the Lord. I noticed many couples, I don't know why. Praise the Lord. And this is them pretending he does not care what I'm saying. I'm like, we are different. 
and secretly is like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you throw the ball, you know. <laughs> so, 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 thank you guys for being amazing. Amen. Yeah. This church of yours is amazing. I'm telling you something, Eunice. Those couples, I've seen their lives, the moment I see their lives shift, come on. The moment I see their lives shift, every time their lives shift, it's normally because they have stopped staring at the other person's problem and started seeing their own. It is, it is that defining moment. And the greatest work has been to use all kinds of English to show if it's you and uh, Eunice, for example, where well, our actors, praise the Lord, the greatest work is to show you your weakness. Because even after I try to show you your weakness, you find a couple go like, but, but, and but means everything you said before I said but was useless. Do you understand? Yeah. But me, even in any conflict, it's until, so being naked is when you lose the buts. Amen. Amen. And you start seeing your weaknesses. You're like, man, say, God, I'm, I'm the one in need of a breakthrough. There's a pastor says something like that. Now, uh, let me give you one more. You determine God's level of involvement. Ah, you, you, you will like this. Yeah, amen. Amen. You are the one, and this is not just God, even in people. You are the one with the authority to determine the level of anyone's involvement. In all the people we mentor, there are some people who are very submissive who will come and say, Dad, uh, uh, I've been asked to do ABCD, can I do it? There are some people who will come, did you, I want you to notice this, this, this sense. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But there are some people who come and say, Manze, uh, I've been asked to go and uh, play the instruments in the wedding, for example. If it's not a wedding from one church. Uh, can I go? That's a set number one. Say set number one. Okay. Set number two, there will be people who come and say, I am going to play the instruments at the wedding. Now, then they have no question. That's set number two. Then they are informing you. They are not asking. They are telling you what they are doing. And that's okay. Because there is freedom of speech and, and, and entitlement to whatever anyone wants to be. And this is the third set. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say amen. amen. Well, I have not seen them for a while. <laughs> then I find them playing the instruments at a wedding. And I'm like, hey, hey, dude, I know you. Nah, nah, hey, dad. I'm like, hey, me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. Those are three different sets. Three different people. And all of them will claim I'm the dad. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, even in God, there is those three sets of people. But what I'm telling you is that the law, in the law of relationship, one of the principles is you determine people's involvement in your life. It is not me to determine these three people who have asked me and who have not asked me. It is them to determine how I'll be involved in their lives. Ah, come on now. Yes. Just like I have no problem whether I find you there playing the instruments, whether you had asked, whether you had not asked, you know what I'm whether you had just involved. It, it was this different levels of I feel like I'm in an office. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's the reception. Is Amen. Yes. Uh, uh, I miss it, uh, the office. Tea. Amen. <laughs> I'm closing. I'm closing. Amen. 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 Oh, speak a new one. Amen. <laughs> All right. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. She's like, what's important is the MPSA. <laughs> the MPSA balance. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. Praise the Lord. So these three sets of people who are submitted differently. So your submission is determined by you. Yes. Even to God. Amen. You could be going to God to inform him. God by the way, I'm marrying Joram. Amen. That is she go. It's like when I say Joram, I love his shit. 
Praise the Lord. She go here and like, Lord, I'm, I'm getting married to him. Come to the wedding if you like. You know that? Or you could be somewhere. Another she go, says, Lord, can I get married to Jonah? What do you think? You know what I'm saying? Oh, and there's the other one who the Lord goes like, wow. It's a wedding. Who is this? This is Jonah, Lord. You know what I'm saying? So, so uh, let me say this. Can I say this? You are going to determine the level of God's involvement in your life. Nobody else. That, that's why the anointing could be dripping here like a waterfall. And, uh, okay, here yeah, I've not seen that. I've not seen people sleeping. But there could be a church where you find the anointing is flowing so heavily. Some people are feeling, wow, God is answering my prayers. And there's somebody at the corner going like, uh, hey, let's try to check out. Because you determine the level of God's involvement in your life. And don't be embarrassed if you involve God in full throttle and your friends don't. Being church people and people going to church does not mean God is involved 100%. A church person does not mean that they have involved God. No. Praise the Lord. Can I tell you the beauty of God being involved? Ah, I should show you this one, eh? Ah, can I show you a nice one? Yes. I have to close with a nice one. Today's message was heavy. I have to close with that? Yes. All right. Let's go to the book of John 2, 1, verse 12. Do you remember there's a time Jesus was invited in a wedding? And the Bible talks about on the third day. Before you even contemplate that, I want you to realize the wedding, come on now, the weddings of those days used to last even a week. It was not a one day. We were not even in the The wine ran out because they have been spoiling themselves for quite a while now. It had different versions. And, and I think it's in Mombasa. There's a particular tribe that do weddings to the, like two days. During the day, at night there's a wedding and the following day. There are different, three different things of the wedding. And I'm telling you, the, 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 it's a fiesta. So, Jesus is invited in the wedding. So he's there, hanging around. Then there's something that, there's a problem. Was there a problem? Yes. The wine ran out. Yes. Then, the story becomes exciting. Jesus did the miracle. Mm -hmm. Can I now tell you the secret of his miracle? Read the Bible. The Bible says, Jesus was invited. Wow. Is it loading? Let's go. Let's go there. Anyone who has it? Yeah, read, read it for us. Uh, John 2, uh, from verse 1. Yes. On the third day, there mm. was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, mm. and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both mm. Jesus and his disciples. Yes, they had been invited. Actually, there's another uh, version that says they had been. So they had been around for a while. So the secret to the miracle is that all along, Jesus has been involved. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. He did that miracle because he was invited in the first place. You're not going to conjure Jesus to do a miracle on something he was not part of in the first place. The question is, was he in the beginning? If he has been there, if you involve him now in your life, that is what is called being born again. Where he is involved in your day-to-day -day basis. And that's why God has given us a system of authority. Because you learn how to sit under the authority of Jesus Christ by the authorities God has given you. There's a thing the Lord told me, I will not talk to people 
They want to hear my voice, but they don't hear the voice of my servants. He's like, no, it starts with my servants. If you can't hear the voice of a servant, he, he has no business talking to you. That's what he told me sometime back. Come on now. Because yeah. there's some people who want to, to, to like claim independence. No, it's a monarchy. There's no independence. Come on. <laughs> there's no democracy. Come on now. God has put in a system. And he wants to be involved. And this system is to teach us how to walk with him. He has to be involved from the word go. Is he involved in your life? Is he involved in your business? Is he involved in your raising children? Is he involved in your marriage before it becomes one? Are you understanding? Yes. Yeah. And as long as he's involved, then a miracle is guaranteed. You should not be afraid of any challenge or any scarcity. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You will always. You will always. Lift your hands and say, Jesus, I invoke you. Ah, somebody say it with purpose. Come on. Jesus, I invoke you. Let me give you the last, last one. Okay, I promise you the last one. So that I don't come back to this one on Sunday. Sunday we do something new. Something, something different. I will avoid a moxie, okay? <laughs> yeah, I will let you heal fast, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Sacrifice always creates a response. Did you get that? Yeah. I'm going to give you the last abstract on this. Then I close, okay? Yeah. Sacrifice will always create a response. If you want God to respond, bring a sacrifice. First of all, of your own life. Then I'm going to show you another sacrifice. Can I do that? Yeah. Okay. The, the reason... Are you with me? Yes. Uh, please ignore your mind. You think I'm about to talk about money. I'm not about to talk about money. As you are, this Kenya, you have been taught about money the wrong way, a lot of it. A sacrifice will always create a response. The reason in the Old Testament, they used to, God would demand the best of the best of the sheep or the bull. Do, do you remember? I don't want to take you through the scriptures because of time now. I gotta close now. Even Zara is coming out from the cave, amen? <laughs> Just like a blade. A hard fire. It's time to go home. Oh, listen, look at me. Oh, it's a man. She's okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. The reason, you remember, they used to give the best of the best? Any farmer or any cattle owner would have to give his very best as a sacrifice. You remember? Yeah. Now, it was, it could, it, there is two levels of best. Best in terms of uh, it's teacher. Did you catch that? Yeah. It's teacher. It's 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 teacher. And it is best in regards to attachment. Now today I won't talk about value because if I talk about uh, value, I will talk about money. So I'm talking about the abstract side to show you a sacrifice you've been holding from God. Can I show you a sacrifice that all of you have? I can guarantee you, whether you have money in your pocket or not, you have a sacrifice God is looking for. You have been denying Him for a very long time. Do you want to know what it is? Yes. Okay, cool. Then we close, okay? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. The, the week, the, 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 let me close so that you know I'm, I'm done. Okay. The reason He would ask for the best of the best, because every shepherd will form an attachment with the best the best. You will form an attachment. Your favorite cow, it is not a cow that is rebellious. It is not a cow, you know what I'm saying, that is not uh, pumped up, and that does not that gives you two liters, and when you look at it, it is actually powder. So, 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 when you're milking the cow, it's like there's a smoke machine, you know what I'm saying, with white smoke, because it's, the cow is producing powder milk, hallelujah. No, no, no. That, that cow that is emaciated is not your favorite cow. You, you, the cow you'll be attached to is the one that gives the best. Your best. You understand? Which now becomes part. It is actually intertwined to become part of your life. Because even when visitors come and you want to introduce cows, you are not going to introduce the rebellious one. 
in the one with powder milk. You're going to introduce this one that looks, uh, it is even half base. No. You know those cows? If your cow goes like, you know, that, that, that cow is dying. Amen. And we need to pray for those cows. Anyway, praise the Lord. But there's some cows, man. You can have to be like, you understand? Mm. <laughs> it does not even open the mouth. Mm. And Tony is like, yeah, that's my favorite cow that I don't have. You know, like, you know, that's your favorite. You are going to form an attachment. Now, the Bible says, offer your lives as living sacrifice. And the funny thing is plural. Offer your lives as living sacrifice. Offer your life as living sacrifice. Now, the sacrifice you are to offer to God, most of the people mistake this and they think you're going to bring in something beautiful to the Lord. You're going to go somewhere and bring something very beautiful. No, the Lord is saying, you see that weakness, that ugliness that you have, wait for it, formed an attachment. It's not holding it. All right. That weakness, be it lust, be it the wrong relationship, be it even weaknesses like pornography, all those funny, funny weakness, be it vulgar, be it hateful. There's some people who don't struggle with the lust, but they are, they are so rebellious. But they love their sin. It has become part of their lives. Because they are attached. That's why it's a habit. Because they are attached. The Lord says that, that, that one you have been attached to, bring it to me. Are you getting what the Lord is saying? Yes. Are you capturing what the Lord is saying? Yes. That that which you have been attached to, that has become your identity, Lose it for me in my presence. Bring it and cut it down before me. You are like, God, for your sake, I'm willing to lose this. I don't know why. Let me go back to the relationship. Two, two guys. Uh, that's not of you. I'm here. So when they're dating, can you, uh, Father, I pray, give them a speech. Amen. <laughs> Been praying for somebody and you don't want to come very soon. You understand? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. During coaching right class, I have now to draw this picture to hopefully you get it. Amen. Yeah. When when you are dating, you have confirmed it's the will of you have also confirmed it's the will of Alright. The will of God. It's not final. Does not mean because it's the will of God, you'll be saying, Shiko, bring me tea. And she's like, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Here is your tea. You are excellent. <laughs> no, it's not going to be that kind of a, a drama in the house. It's because it's the will of God. It could be the will of God, and one day you may tell her, Bring me a cup of tea. And she's like, Get the tea yourself. You know what I'm saying? Even though it was the will of God. I'm not saying that's right. What I'm telling you is the will of God is not final. There is work to be done. Because the will of God is not the end, it's the beginning. You know it's the will of God to start. Yes. You're knowing it's the will of God so that you start. But start what? Doing the work. It's called a wise woman builds her. Praise the Lord. Yes. So, you don't begin to build your home after you say, I do. The moment you know it's the will of God, what you, it's, it's from the dating itself, you're building your home. Yes. And some of you could be building it with straw and others with stone. Hallelujah. Yes. Are we together? Yes. Now, when you're dating, what's a fault? You look to see this. It's a, it's a fun example. <laughs> Uh, yeah, read out. Read in, read out, read out. Yes, it's no nightmares at night. Amen. 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 
and don't call me and ask, Dad, what does it mean? You know, it means not it's just a nightmare. Amen. Yeah, please trust me, amen. So when you're dating, you've confirmed it's the will of God. I, I'm done, I'm done. Are you happy? Yeah. You've, you've confirmed it's the will of God, but you've noticed a few things about him. There's some, what are some of those weaknesses you've noticed about him? And some of those weaknesses you've noticed about him? Tell me. What does he do? <laughs> She's punishing me for falling out. Alright, please go for the jacket. <laughs> Yeah, she's not so busy, but time. Yeah. Yeah, she's a piece of work, yeah? Praise the Lord. She's the real God, but she's a piece of work. She knows her mystery. Amen. No, we're going to associate her. We're going to talk about her. We're going to talk about her. We're going to talk about her. You understand what I'm saying? I'm like, submit, mama, submit. You understand what I'm saying? All right, what else does she do? It's an example. Una casita la buena que yo. She gets angry when I don't meet her expectations at times. Wow. Why do you do that? She's not submissive. The last thing you said was she's a little temper. You understand what I'm saying? Little temper. I don't go for day to kill it on a Jew and I go for a man's kill it on a tan. Who's up and leave there? You wait for a mocha in public. You understand what I'm saying? Now, praise the Lord. Even though she loves and he loves, you understand what I'm saying? Let me ask you, what's the greatest thing she can do, even though she has money? 